My name is Jason Wilcox. I'm the marketing coordinator here at TCI Engineering. Today we're going to be installing our four link for the 73 to 87 square body C10. We designed this kit to have maximum drop without stepping the rail and yet greatly improve drivability and performance. All right, first thing, we need to do this safely, so let's get the truck up on jack stands. Best place to support it would be just behind the cab, but in front of the rear axle. Uh, once we do the C-notches, it'll help keep some of the, the weight off of the back end of the chassis. Uh, we do need to take the bed off, or at least lift it high enough to be able to drill some holes vertically. It's much easier to just get it off there, so undo all the wiring. Um, You'll also need to take the drive shaft and all the rear suspension, the stock rear suspension completely out. And there's one brake hose that connects off of the frame onto the axle that will also need to be undone. All right, so once the bed is off, we now need to remove the leaf spring hanger brackets and the front leaf mounts. Uh, there's four rivet heads per bracket. Those tanks in it. Um, uh, just take your time on the front ones. We are going to reuse those holes for our four link bracket. Um, so those brackets there, those ones, those holes, we will be reusing. All right, so once all the four link brackets are removed, we need to take the factory shock mounts and cut them off. Um, we just used a grinder. Uh, it was pretty quick work of it. Uh, once we've got it cut off, then we just uh, used the same grinder and, and just cleaned up the housing as best we could. Um, it's not really detrimental to the install, but uh, just trying to smooth out the rear end, make it look a little bit better. Probably a good time to maybe put some paint on it too while it's out. And so your factory brake hose tab on the frame will need to be removed, so there's another rivet head that needs to be pulled off. We will be reusing that brake hose bracket. We just need to drill a secondary hole on it uh, just to move it back about a half an inch. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. So in order to install the rear bracket, you basically want to measure 26 and 7 eighths from the back of the frame to the back of the frame bracket. The shock mount goes behind the axle to be able to tell which one is driver and passenger side. Uh, once you've got the measurement, go ahead and clamp it to the frame and you can begin drilling holes. Um, we like to center punch them first before drilling. Um, makes lining up the holes a little bit easier. Now, it doesn't matter which order that you do it in. Um, but uh, all holes need to be drilled, both horizontal and vertical. There are a couple hiding underneath the frame too, so don't forget those. Keep in mind our frame has already been C-notched. Um, you don't have to do that first. Uh, here's showing how we did the C-notch. Uh, just use that bracket as a template and uh, go ahead and remove it. And then you can just go ahead and use a cutoff wheel uh, to cut your scribe. Now uh, this is the part where the jack stands come in handy. Um, you know, once you've drilled the holes, you know where the location's going to be. Um, so it will go back true once you put the bolt holes back in. But for the time being, if there's any weight on the back of that frame, it's going to be a flimsy flyer. Uh, we used a grinder to clean back and have the frame match the outside bracket. So that brake hose there has got to go through the inside frame bracket of ours. So here we're showing how it goes through that bracket. So this is the part where that brake hose has to be disconnected in order to get it through there and straightened out a little bit. Now we always mention to do all mock-up first before powder coating. Um, we weren't able to finish the video with it in bare steel. Um, so here we are after full mock-up. Now we had it powder coated. Now we're actually doing the assembly on it. So both the brackets, outside and inside, can be bolted together. You want to take caution on some of these because if you do the vertical bolts first, you won't be able to, to install the horizontal ones because they kind of intersect with each other. 
Uh, so you want to do the horizontal ones first. Um, we're putting anti-seize on everything. Good idea to do that. Uh, here we are putting the washers in. A little bit easier to just use some needle nose pliers to get the washers in first before the nut. But we leave access holes on the inside there to be able to get your ratchet and socket. But once all the horizontal ones are done, you can then do the verticals. Again, don't forget about the ones that are on the bottom of the frame. Let's see how he's having to lift that up there. That's one of the ones that intersects with the horizontal. A good shot of the inside. You've got quite a bit of room to be able to do it. Um, those access holes really make it nice. So a little trick here to do some of the vertical ones, at least the upside down vertical. Uh, we just put a little bit of Loctite on the washer, eh, five, ten minutes beforehand. And it just makes installing these a little bit easier. Uh, we were cautious trying not to put any on the threads at all. Um, doesn't matter too much, but it does help keep the washer on the nut and keep it still. We're going to do both passenger and driver side, make sure all the, the bolts are tight. So the frame will pull itself straight because you drilled the hole before doing the C-notch on it. So the holes will all line up again. And there you can see that it's fully encaptured inside and outside. So moving to the front brackets. So we've got a left and a right. So the slotted hole is going to go towards the back of the vehicle. And this one here is driver. So this one here is passenger side. So we will be reusing the factory holes that the leaf spring used. And go ahead and install all these bolts and nuts and tighten them down, driver and passenger side. Again, always using anti-seize and all of this stuff. All right, so we took the opportunity to put a little black paint on our rear end just to clean it up a little bit. So you can see the brake hoses here, how they've been pulled out away from the housing. It's going to make installing this bracket a little bit easier. So there is no left and right here. There's basically just a top and a bottom on each side. Um, Basically, these two brackets clamp together using the leaf pad as a locating device. Uh, these capture 360 degrees of the axle bracket and the leaf pad itself, so it's extremely strong. So you've got through bolts that go all the way down, and then just a washer and a nut that goes on the bottom. might take a minute to get those all aligned because uh, that bolt is pretty long and we're very precise on those holes so there's not a lot of give there so you might have to wiggle it around a little bit to get it where you need it but there's a locating pin on that leaf pad and on that top bracket so it helps center it both left to right and front to back uh, this is your complete axle bracket here all right, once you're done, you should have a small gap there. Then you can kind of bend the brake hose back close again. Clean that up a little. All right, so adjusting the link bars. These guys need to be 24 and 3 quarter from center to center. So you also want to take two of the four bars and adjust them two full turns out. These will now be the upper link bars. Uh, this is to set pinion angle. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and tighten the jam nuts. 
I'll go ahead and install those on the front bracket with the adjuster uh, onto the bracket. You can go ahead and put the rear in, slide it up underneath the frame, and basically just use a jack to bring it up to place. It'll take a little bit of finagling here. Um, we'll use a punch just to help align and then uh, get the bolts through there. We typically like to do the top first, so do the driver and passenger top, and then uh, you can just kind of jack it up and get the bottom one in a position. So on the driver's side, lower uh, link bar mount is where we're going to connect our track bar mount. And here we are installing it. So this guy will basically allow us to attach a half inch bolt to the track bar uh, from the driver's side. It will go crosswise to the rear axle bracket on the lower as well. And we're just running through all the nuts and bolts here getting everything installed. We'll show the track bar here in just a second. And like I say, a little bit of finagling. But be patient, they will go in. All right, so this is where the track bar mount on the passenger side will go. Both of these guys basically should sit horizontal. Um, that way the heim joints on the track bar don't bind at all through suspension travel. Um, the center punch is a good way to hold it still while you impact it. This will help locate the rear end left to right once the vehicle is all assembled, uh, helping center it. That will be one of the last things that we do. All right, so I put one of the bolts going down through the top. Um, he put it going up through the bottom. I prefer him to go down, um, you know, just in case that nut ever comes loose, it, it'll at least sit still. So on the right tech shocks, We'll want to go to the bottom hole for the lowest setting with the adjuster knob at the top. That'll be half inch hardware on the top and 5 eighths on the bottom. So technically you cannot reverse those. So you've got a little space that goes between the shock and the axle bracket and then the 5 eighths hardware. You'll do some of your fine tuning on the shock itself as far as ride height. The axle bracket has three adjuster holes. They're roughly seven eighths inch uh, apart from each other, which equates to about one inch in ride height um, per movement up. Now, um, that brake hose bracket, so there's a little bit of a uh, movement that it's got to do, it's got to go back a little bit. So just drill a new hole to move that brake hose tab just a little bit farther back. That'll help it clear the, the new frame brackets. Then just reconnect that line and the hose and you can bleed the, bleed the brakes. Pretty much that easy. Four link is installed. Now we can just go ahead and put the bed back on put the drive shaft back in. So here's how we're centering the rear end here. So you just take a measurement from the tire to the outer fender, left and right, once it's down on its weight of course, and just make sure that it's even left to right. Or once the track bar is set, then you can just tighten up the jam nuts. 